and accessibility in social media, something that is truly important because uh, as we get into, social media should be for everyone. So to start off, um, since this is about social media and accessibility, we're going to start off by talking about social media. So what is the purpose of social media? It's to be social, you know, to connect and engage with others. There's so many platforms out there right now that allow you to do this and in doing so meet your audience where they are. And so when it comes to accessibility, the same principles should apply. You should always strive to connect in an inclusive way or you miss out on connecting with your full potential audience. Um, as we can see here, um, 1 billion people experience some form of disability and this increases when accounting for temporary and situational disabilities. And so what happens when people like those come to social or websites that you know don't um, include them or speak to them in their way, they just leave. So you're missing out on them, you're missing those connections. So what does accessi accessibility mean? On social media, it means recognizing include exclusions that currently exist, learning from your followers, um, taking their input in, and present information out there in the clearest possible way. So to start off, we wanted to show you this uh, example post of what a tweet would actually sound like if it was read by a screen reader. So, whoops. The text, U, mathematical sans serif italic small t, mathematical sans serif italic small h, mathematical sans serif italic small 1, mathematical sans serif italic small n, mathematical sans serif italic small k, it's mathematical script small c, mathematical script small u, mathematical script small t, e2, mathematical sans serif old small d, mathematical sans serif old small r, mathematical sans serif old small 1, mathematical sans serif old small t, mathematical sans serif old small a. So that goes on for another minute. As we can tell, it is unintelligible, right? Uh, that tells us absolutely nothing. So... Uh, something to keep in mind, and we'll we'll get into what what we can do better uh, as we go on. So our first and favorite, my favorite, Maria's favorite too, maybe. Um, we'll talk about emojis. Okay, so my question for the group is: How many of you have ever posted just using emojis? I'm guilty of that, and I do it a lot. So. Why? Because it's easy. You know, emojis convey that emotion. And when you can't think of words, um, sometimes the perfect string of emojis not only works, but it gives your brain a break too. But as you'll see, what we think of as a simple post of emojis is in fact the opposite for those with assistive technology. So my favorite example to do is like, you know, you're on vacation no priorities, no deadlines, you're just posting for you, not anyone else, not for work. So you're on vacation having a drink, you wanna capture the moment. And this is what you post to go along with your vacation vibes. So this is what other people see, but this is what you hear. Palm tree, smiling face with sunglasses, tropical drink, woman dancing, medium light skin tone, party popper. So for those who can see it visually, it makes sense. But then when you take out the context and it's just the speech reader, again, like the other previous example, unintelligible. Another trend we see a lot um, that's even built into messaging apps is the combination combining characters into figures. So this one, the visual shruggy, will be read aloud as macron backslash underline Katakana underline slash macron. I probably also pronounced some of those wrong, but um, again, it's unintelligible and likely would cause that follower to leave your environment and maybe even unfollow you. So what you can do to keep your emojis accessible, you know, use them sparingly. Um, when you think about creating your posts, Make them part of your post, but not the star of your post. Um, and it's put the information first, and then, you know, you can throw in the emojis in the, at the end where everything that you wanted to say is already out there. And it's also good practice um, to avoid using emojis in your profile name. Um, again, I, on my personal thing, I am, am guilty of this, you know. Um, I have lots of those. And then also um, 
resist changing the color on customizable emojis. Every unique icon gets a descriptor info and that includes skin tones. So as our first example showed, it will be a long mathematical explanation that people will just tune out and leave. And it's important too, when you're using emojis, sometimes we think it's cute to replace a word with an emoji and that can really lack context for folks and then also lose the message. So that's why putting them at the end is generally um, better. So let's talk about how we write accessibly for social media. The important pieces of this um, sort of come down to thinking about context and uh, how descriptive you can be. So if you're using a, a hyperlink, it's important to uh, add content indicators. So this is essentially just telling folks what it is they're going to click on. So if they're going to click on it and it takes them to a podcast, you can you know put in barracks audio. If it's going to take them to a video, you can put video. If it's to a picture, you can do picture. Um, you'll see a lot of uh, news sources these days are doing a lot more work on this, but it's just a, a great habit to get into because then it prepares your user for what, what to expect. And sometimes that means that uh, they choose to not, not go to that site or they continue to because they're prepared for it. You also want to think about using URL shorteners and bit.ly bit, B -I -T dot L -Y, does have a free version. Um, it's really helpful instead of posting a long hyperlink string, um, because again, that gets read out loud by assistive technologies um, and keeping it shorter and at the end is, is more accessible for your users. It's also important to place hashtags at the end. Again, similar to, uh, to emojis, you don't wanna start replacing words with hashtags uh, because again, it disrupts the flow and the message that's going on. So this is a perfect sweat segue into hashtags. How many of us feel like we really get hashtags? Like you understand them. All right, I'm seeing some iffies. Um, hashtags really are meant to connect your content to a greater, larger conversation, right? So if we're saying like hashtag my NAU view, we hope that when we go search that hashtag, students across campus are posting really beautiful pictures or anecdotes about their their time at NAU, right? So um, the important pieces of that is to remember that it's it's a tag, right? It is putting putting it into somewhere else and it's not meant to necessarily be some cutesy new way to deliver deliver information. So um, just like in other text uh, to speech programs, they read them word for word using the spaces and capital letters to differentiate and separate between terms. So when you're using hashtags, it's important to use what's called camel casing. So that's where you capitalize each word of the hashtag. So the, the difference of hashtag perks of being a lumberjack versus perks of being a lumberjack, right? Um, because then that all gets put into one word. Uh, the same thing, like you can see on this, uh, this Twitter example is that the Black Lives Matter um, is usually how it ends up getting read versus Black Lives Matter. So there's a difference there because of the lack of camel casing. Next up, alt text and flyers. So if you want to expand your reach and be more inclusive, you can start using alt captions if you're not doing so already. These allow those um, using a screen reader to hear the visual descriptions. But um, a lot of this, a good note is a lot of the social media platforms have it available, but it's not always the default setting. So a lot of times you'll have to go in to the settings or the advanced settings and turn them on. So our first um, platform is Twitter. For Twitter, you'll have to go in and again, go to the settings, go to accessibility and turn on compose image. And then if you're going to create a tweet and you pull up um, a picture from your camera roll or on the computer, you will see at the bottom, it has a capital A-L-T. And so you'll click on that and then you'll add your alt text um, describing what you're tweeting out. Instagram, um, it's, it's more hidden, I would say, um, because you don't get there till the very end. And a lot of times it's easy to forget um, that you have to do it because you write your caption, you'll go to post, but then 
there isn't an alt text button right there with everything else. For Instagram, you'll have to go to the advanced settings um, and then write your alt text and then be able to describe it. Facebook, I would say, is the most inclusive in terms of it has things already there. It will add machine generated um, descriptive text to photos and it also does that with any videos you upload as well. But again, they aren't always the most descriptive and they might not always be um, the most accurate. So it's always a good idea to go back in and see what it has and change it to make it clearer for your audience. So in terms of writing um, alt text, kind of like what Mackenzie was saying, the more descriptive, the better. Um, we always recommend err on the side of more rather than less. As you'll see here um, in the example, it's a little small, but the alt text reads, Latifa sits in her wheelchair and smiles. She's placed on a red background with outlines that are yellow around her chair. So the alt text doesn't just describe um, the image itself, but the entire graphic. It includes the color and then the little design, squiggly yellow and blue um, elements. Our next example is Louie. Um, when you're, you're looking at these, you wanna make sure it applies to the context that it's um, being promoted on. So let's say we have this picture of Louie and it's on the NAU Athletics website. An alt text for that might be Louie T. Lumberjack because that's what Louie is known, that's his formal name. But if the same picture was on say, um, a web page that had the mascots of the entire big sky, we wanna get it even more descriptive. So Louis T. Lumberjack of Northern Arizona University to make sure that they know that this is his name and what, what college he's affiliated with. And another thing, let's say um, this was found um, in Klein Library. They're doing you know, Louis over the years. To distinguish it from all the other Louis, it's a good idea to you know, include the context and the, time, the date. So this would be Louis Lumberjack at a football game in 2018. So oh, another um, favorite topic of ours. If anyone has come to any social office hours, we talk a lot about flyers and them going in the feed or as main posts. And we'd like to reiterate our stance <laughs> that when, if possible, always try to not post your flyers as the main thing. Why? Um, there's so much information on the flyers. If you're thinking about accessibility and alt text, it would be so complicated to, probably you do not even enough space to write out everything that is in um, the graphic. It's complicating, it's overwhelming, um, not just to you putting it in, but people that, your, your audience. What you should do instead, you know, have, again, all the main elements, the important elements as text in your caption, have, you can have a visual, um, and then link out, link it to the NAU events website or a Facebook event where people can go for more information. So keep things simple and link out. So talking about captioning, this is also becoming actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed. I've been perusing TikTok quite a bit and these Gen Zers are all over the caption train these days. Um, and a lot of them are doing it themselves, uh, which is important, but there, we're gonna talk about different tools that you can use for captioning. But anytime that you post a video, it's important that you uh, find ways to close caption. So um, for, for YouTube, it is super simple. YouTube has its own closed captioning system going on. You can upload text right to it and then it'll time it out for you. Um, I, I taught myself how to do it and now I feel like a pro even though um, it's the, a very basic skill that I learned, but it, it's pretty easy. Um, Facebook also has captioning opportunities where you can upload 
like, let's say you recorded, you know, yourself and you're reading from a script and then you wanted to upload that as your closed caption, you can do that on Facebook as well. You can also use the post description area to add text to caption um, video posts like on Instagram. So you can uh, put more information there. Um, LinkedIn also allows you to have closed captioning if you utilize it from the desktop. Um, but when you're using captions like to make your video look cute, like when they're not closed captions, but they're you're captioning as part of the visual overall, you want to make sure that you're using um, sizes that are large enough that can be read, um, that you have good contrast between the backgrounds. So um, if you're using Snapchat or Instagram story, you want to make sure that those are um, are the way you're you're creating those don't make it more difficult for people around you. Um, and then if you want to turn your Snapchat story, like let's say you, you've done a whole long, you know, takeover on Instagram or on Snapchat and you want to turn that into like a standalone video that can be shared, the best thing to do is to upload that to YouTube and then caption it from there um, because Instagram and Snapchat don't have captioning functionality within the app. Um, and then also make sure that you've got that Twitter uh, alt text turned on that will be helpful there. Um, and then some of the captioning tools that we wanted to recommend are Clipomatic and subtitles and those will automate your subtitles on social media videos. Um, and those, uh, I think they do cost uh, like a couple of dollars, but they save you a lot of time in the long run because it takes a lot of the, the work from you. And I think it's just like a one time, you know, $4 app that you purchase. So that can be really helpful um, to keep to keep you from doing, um, you know, a lot of the captioning on your own, but can can really streamline that process. Um, I want to pause really quick because we have a lot of questions about flyers, it looks like in the chat. So, um, choo -choo -choo. so you can't really upload a PDF to Facebook. Uh, it doesn't work like you can only do JPEGs or PNGs and that is sort of a bummer because then it just removes all alt text. So if you've created your flyer in InDesign um, that has the ability to be screen read as a PDF, once it goes onto social media, that is lost, which is another, which is part of the reason why um, it's recommended not to post that because um, all of that metadata is sort of just gone to the wind of social media. So um, it, it's not just you <laughs> that can't figure out how to upload PDFs. It's just because uh, the, the networks don't, don't allow you to do that. Um, let's see, I wanted to make sure we had also Grace, your question about the alt text setting that you've seen a lot of accounts are using alt text in the description field of the posts. Um, personally, I don't know it, what if, if there are functionality differences, but I do think it's a visibility thing. So I think it's important for folks to start demonstrating that alt text is important. And so putting it in the caption moves it front and center. So other people start to get along uh, with that idea as well. And so I think it's more of a, like an ally demonstration versus a functionality demonstration. I might, I, I might be mistaken. So if anybody knows differently, let me know. But that is my, uh, my assumption there. Yes, and I'd um, jump in what Mackenzie was saying too. Um, a lot of times people, um, rather than putting their hashtags um, as a comment below um, their post, they'll put um, the alt text just so it's even more prominent than it would um, ordinarily be. And um, going back to the flyer question, we're not saying not to post your flyers at all, but let's say you created a Facebook event, you know, all the details are there. So um, event, an event allows you to upload other documents. So in that case, you know, you could turn the PDF into a JPEG and post the flyer there as well. So that way you're meeting um, both of your audiences. Yep, because the details can be read from the Facebook event on a screen reader, but your, um, your users who just want to look at the flyer can see the flyer there as well. Um, and then the question about does the reader pause between sentences or paragraphs? Uh, I don't think you need special characters. I think as long as your text is written in, in good English, it, it will mimic English speaking. I, I'm not sure how, that, how, that, how to explain that, but it, it recognizes periods, commas. I, it recognizes paragraph indentations, all that good stuff. So I don't think you need anything specific. Now, that's another cutesy trend on social media. You know, you put like the three dots and then, you know, there's more to the caption later that would read kind of funky on a, on a screen reader. So um, it's important to, uh, to think about that. Yeah, right as you normally would. It uses pronunciation to read correctly. Exactly. 
but you know, on social media, all the cool kids don't use punctuation correctly. So what are we going to do? <laughs> That's when we want to be more mindful and write uh, as you normally would. So talking about fonts. Going on Mackenzie's trend about what all the the cool kids want to do. Um, again, we focus on Instagram because that's where a lot of people are right now. On Instagram, everyone is just looking for a way to stand out from everyone else. So a lot of people that you'll see and um, a lot of influencers, they'll go to the special websites and have um, custom font to put on theirs to be like, so it'll, you know, give them the extra thing that makes people stop in their feed to see like, oh, what is this? But Custom font is the worst thing you could do um, for accessibility because text-to-speech programs, they skip over the characters um, without even attempting to read them. Uh, um, the original um, first tweet that we shared was an example of a custom font, the, um, the cursive script. And so anytime you're looking, to, looking at fonts, the best idea is to just to stick to ones that are native to the platform and avoid customizing anything that wouldn't be able to, to be read. And um, in terms of like stories and other social media as well, making sure that the font you have in there is, uh, is readable. So, you know, it's not too tiny and hidden away. People can, it's large enough to read. And another important piece to the conversation about accessibility comes to inclusive language as well. So when you're writing for social media, you want to make sure that you are writing in an inclusive voice. So you want to create this, this culture of community. That's what social media is all about, right? It's uh, to engage and to socialize and to sort of feel like a, a part of something bigger, right? If we're using social media um, to its greatest power. That is what we are trying to do. So when you are writing posts, um, it's great to, to use terms like we or our or us to make people feel like they are included. Um, and luckily at NAU, we kind of come with this predetermined uh, word that is inclusive and that's a lumberjack, you know. Um, so lumberjacks come from all walks of life and corners of the earth. And as such, you know, uh, they are a special group that can be addressed in that way. And I think that's something really beautiful that um, can go a long way in sort of creating a culture of community on your social media, which is hopefully what we're all trying to do with our various social channels is to create that sense of belonging. And sometimes we might not even recognize that the language we use in our captions can be exclusive. So if we just put some intentionality in that inclusiveness of the language, we can really uh, make sure that we're continuing that goal of building community. which leads us to the social media and accessibility tools that we want to make sure that we leave you with uh, because it's hard, right? A lot of us who are doing social media on this call are probably, it is not your full-time job, right? This is just something in addition to your normal tasks and the things that you're doing. Um, and that can make it extra hard. And then, you know, when there's all these other elements to think about, it can become really overwhelming and stressful. But there's a lot of different tools available for all of us here that can sort of uh, minimize minimize the work that we have to put into it in the front, but uh, increase efficiency and inclusivity, which is ultimately the goal here. So um, we will start talking about those right now. So as Mackenzie said, um this is a lot, you know, it's hard to process, it's hard to know how your actions um, come across with the accessibility. Luckily, um, there's these tools we've listed up here that you can go and like, you know, put in your things and it'll check it for you and assess the re readability of your, your copy, um, your website and things like that. So when in doubt, I would say, you know, give all these a try and see if what you've been doing um, lines up with the accessibility um, standards. And I recommend like, take a take a screenshot of this or save it uh, to have in your back pocket um, so that you can you can return back to this and check out these these handy tools. Um, the one that I learned about when we were prepping for this presentation that I thought was really cool is on Twitter. You can like tweet at image alt text um, or get alt text in reply to a tweet and then or that has an image and like these little 
Twitter robots, the good kind, um, will, if they're available, will create all text for you on your behalf. And I, I just think that's like a neat, like kind of cool tech thing um, that I haven't really heard of before. Uh, so I'm, I'm intrigued to use that. And again, um, you know, this is a lot of information. So if you're wondering what you can do going forward, I would just say, you know, choose one thing that you want to improve upon and start there. Um, because, you know, my full job is social media, but even us, like we are not where we could be in terms of making everything inclusive just because there's so many platforms, lack of time. Um, and it is hard. Um, part of our strategy for our social media is letting our students you know, represent us, um, do the talking. And so we do a lot of takeovers. And so trying to um, get students on board with even like adding text to what the videos they post, um, that's always a struggle. And so we are looking for ways to try and make it easier for them, um, but then to get more compliance with what we are hoping to put out. And the important part of this is that, you know, we're all learning together, right? And we're all trying to take these steps to sort of create this more inclusive social media realm that we can. And so um, conversations like this are, are important to have for, for not us because, you know, we're, we can't claim to be the experts necessarily because, you know, like Maria said, every platform is different and they're always changing and it can be really hard to keep on top of. But as long as we are all here having these conversations and holding each other accountable, we can make sure that we build on that intentionality and, and build a more inclusive social media strategy overall. So um, with that, we, we sort of just have questions and it seems like we had a lot of questions in the beginning. So hopefully we can have some good conversation here. Um, things maybe you've seen on social media, times that maybe you've noticed things haven't been accessible because you know we learned from from mistakes sometimes like have you noticed things that happen that might not be you know the most the most inclusive or um something you'd like to share experiences perhaps yeah Mackenzie should we uh consider going back through our social medias and adding accessibility to them if we can like if instagram allows you to edit posts i think if you had the opportunity and the time to do that it would it would be really meaningful for your audience that that benefits from it i think that could be really cool and i think it could be um you know now my like social media brain is churning but that could be a post in and of itself it's you know saying like hey guess what we've just gone back and reviewed our social media and we've added all this alt text like go review our old posts or go you know do this and um and sort of like make make a celebration out of that out of the the new experience of adding that good question uh, let's see. GIFs are not that accessible. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good point, Rachel. Thanks for sharing that. GIFs are, are hard. And you know, the, what's really hard about GIFs too, is that they also almost don't always make sense, um, in general. And so it can be really hard um, to, to even figure out. And I haven't played much on like Giphy or Tenor or the GIF places. Like, I wonder if there are alt text we, options there. They do. Um, oh. They've updated their things since then. And oh. so, um, yes, they do have alt text and then also um, different um, third party platforms too. So one of the things we use to schedule our posts is Buffer. And so we do use a lot of GIFs in ours and you can add um, your alt text just as you can if you're uploading a video or a picture. Good questions. Maria and I haven't done a presentation like this before. So um, we, you know, are, are working through this um, and, and figuring, you know, learning as we go and trying to do our best practices. So, um, you know, if we, if we end a little early, it's, uh, I, everybody can have a little bit of time left in the afternoon, but we definitely want to make sure everybody feels like they're, they're getting their questions answered and maybe, you know, spitballing ideas and, and having a good conversation. So, um, let's see, Calvin. 
Um, actually, it is pretty, uh, I would say yes. If you can add content indicators on websites, I also think that's helpful. Anytime there's a hyperlink, it's just a, it's, I, I like to think of it as like a courtesy. Like, where is this link taking me? Is it taking me to a Russian troll farm or is it, you know what I mean? It like gives people a sense of what to expect. Um, Mackenzie, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know I am doing an ethnography for my disability studies class. Um, so I've been taking notes and I will uh, be including you guys in that research I'm doing. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds great. And then uh, back to the, the question about video and websites. Another great thing um, we talked about like YouTube and Facebook um, having captions already there. Um, it's always a great idea to, you know, embed that post. So then that way everything's there. Does anybody have any tips or tricks that they might want to share when they're doing social media that they have um, to keep themselves working towards accessibility with their copy and their language and alt text and all that good stuff? Any good experiences? Hey, this is Sarah. One of the things that I've tried to do specific to like if there's instructions on things, it's not necessarily social media, but I think there's a, an application there is you know, giving context for the thing on the screen, you know, if it's a button or a field you have to fill out, um, is it the top of the page, the bottom of the page, um, so that, um, you know, put a little context to it. And I think, you know, specifically in the IT world that, that helps us out a little bit, but I think there's context for that. Awesome. And Sarah, will you, you, I, I noticed earlier, you mentioned something about Microsoft Teams. Does that have captioning live streamed like, or, it does. I actually tried it out at a meeting last Friday um, and it was pretty decent. It just, you know, you just turn it on. It's in preview mode. Okay. Um, I think because of our current like team setup, we can get some stuff early and it just appeared at the bottom and it had the, the, narr the, the person's name first and, um, you know, it wasn't a hundred percent, but it's pretty good. Okay. And then if you upload a video to stream, which is part of our um, Office 365 um, ecosystem, I guess you could call it. it. You know, stream is kind of like our uh, YouTube or Kaltura kind of video streaming service. Um, and when you upload a video there, if you you have to do a couple of things, like select the language as English, and then you can turn on the auto transcription. And it's pretty powerful because you once that's in there, you can search for a key term, and then it'll jump you directly to that spot in the video, which is pretty helpful. So, you know, in the context of if a lecture is being recorded um, that a student was like, oh, my, my dog was freaking out and I knew they were talking about um, iron or, <laughs> I don't know, that's the first word that came to mind. You can type that into the transcription, it'll jump right to it. Um, and that's an automatic thing too. So, and, you, and, and it doesn't have to be things that were recorded in Teams. You can upload anything to stream too. Oh, that's good to know too. So Calvin, I don't know if that like live streaming on Facebook or Instagram, I don't think has captions, Maria, no? Yes, um, they do not have um, captions um, yet. When we did our, um... Mackenzie, what was the Facebook series we did over summer? Uh, forecast from Flagstaff. Forecast from Flagstaff. When we did Forecast from Flagstaff, um, those were live shows, and um, NAU TV had to hire outside. Um, so someone was on the East Coast, and they were doing the captions as it was going live. Um, so normally, I would say a lot of people don't have those resources, but if you were to do, do a live, you could always go back and after um, put those um, captions in and then um, re um, share. And you could let your audience know when you're live streaming that you will go back and add captions. Sean, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on the captions that are built in with Teams and Zoom will have that option at some point. Uh, we're working on getting that in, at NAU right now, but uh, they're not an accommodation. At that point, they're a service to help the general public. There is a difference between having that and having a capture on hand. And that is also a possibility when we do events here at NAU, 
you can turn in that request through disability uh, resources and we can have someone in there to caption when you're having an event and uh, that way it is the actual captions because there's a you have to meet a certain percentage to be considered using it as accommodation. Perfect. That's super helpful to know. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I'm for everyone, um, because we don't have like a sign in sheet, just drop your uh, preferred email address in the chat and we'll make sure to send you the zoom recording and the materials presentation, because um, I can save the chat uh, field um, and make sure I've got that. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Anything else before we close out? I just want to throw one more thing out there. Yeah. I'm going to put in the chat. We have our virtual scavenger hunt going this month as well. And there are prizes for completing it. Um, so please go out there and take a chance and try some mm -hmm. different activities and uh, see if you can win a prize. Awesome. Yay. Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, Calvin said also. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, and another event next week. Yes. Make sure to check out the calendar for sure. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And for events, I'm just going to throw this out there too. Um, if you're looking to promote, you could always send um, information our way to social at nau.edu and we can include it as part of our campus happenings that goes out to students and, you know, make sure it's out there for a larger audience. Yay. Cool. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My computer's wigging out one sec, Marie.